present video, we're looking for the sample size formula for estimating a proportion. So let's think about the margin of error formula first that's used in the confidence interval for proportions. It would be E is equal to Z alpha divided by 2 times the square root of P hat Q hat over N. All right, so that's your formula for the margin of error. If we solve this formula for N, we will have the sample size formula for estimating a proportion. So to do that, we're going to basically get N by itself. So the first step I want to do is divide both sides by this Z term, right? So we're going to divide Z alpha divided by 2 into the right-hand side and also into the left-hand side. When you do that, of course, this term and this term will cancel out, and you're going to end up with, you end up with simply E over Z alpha divided by 2 is equal to the square root of p hat q hat over n. Now our next step is going to essentially be to square both sides so we can remove this square root. So a square here on the left hand side, a square here on the right hand side. So of course we'll have e squared and then z squared alpha divided by 2 is equal to just p hat q hat over n. Now I need to get my n over here on the left hand side and get this fraction over onto the right hand side. So I'm going to multiply both sides of this expression by this fraction reciprocated. So in other words on the left here I'll have z alpha divided by 2 squared over e squared multiplied by this and then the same thing on the right hand side z squared alpha divided by 2 over e squared. All right, when I do that, we're going to have the z's cancel out over here, the e's cancel out over here, leaving just 1 is equal to p hat q hat over n times z alpha divided by 2 squared over e squared. Now the last thing I need to do is multiply both sides by n to get the n over to the left-hand side and keep everything else on the right-hand side. Let's multiply the right-hand side by n and the left-hand side by n. And this will produce the following. So n times 1, of course, is just n. And that will be equal to this expression without the n, right? So we'll have p hat q hat, because these n's cancel out, I'll then have z alpha divided by 2 squared over e squared. Okay, so that's our final expression. Now from here, there's only one thing missing. We don't know p hat and q hat, right? These quantities are unknown to us. So we can assume a confidence level and we can assume a margin of error, but where do we get the p hat and q hat from? They're normally derived from a sample because p hat's called the sample proportion. Q hat's called the sample proportion. If we don't know what they are, we have to pick values. We just have to make them up, essentially. But we want to make them up intelligently. We don't want to just pick any old number, right? We do know some things. We know that P hat plus Q hat have to add up to 1. That's a rule, right? They have to add up to 100% or 1 as a decimal. And I'd want to make sure that when I multiply these two together, I get the largest number possible. This will ensure that I have at least as big an n as I need. I don't want to have an n that's smaller than I actually need. And since I don't know what the p and q would be, I want to be careful. For example, what if when I put p in for, let's say if I put p as 10% and I put q as 90%, that's a combination that adds up to 100%, right? 10 and 90. What if when I put those in, I get an answer for my n of 60? But what if when I put in, say, 50 and 50, I get an answer of 70? Well, in that case, if I assume it's 10 and 90, I need a sample size of, you know, only 60. And that would mean that, you know, if it really in the real world was 50-50, I wouldn't have a large enough sample size because when it's 50-50, the N turns out to be 70. So I'd want to make sure that whatever P and Q I pick here, it's the P and Q that when you multiply them, it gives you the largest number to make sure that my N is at least as big as it needs to be. That way it's not smaller than it actually needs to be. So this is the part that's a little complicated. To do this, you'd have to either remember calculus or algebra. Let's take it from an algebra perspective, because more people have that as their background. So if p plus q is equal to 1, then if I use that and I make the assumption that I want what? I want to have the idea that the function f of x is going to end up being a maximum when I multiply these two quantities together. So let me just uh, put a little notation here. So I'm going to say let p be equal to x, 
and therefore what? Q hat would be equal to 1 minus x. Why do I say that? Because if I solve this expression here for Q hat, I'd move this guy over, it'd be 1 minus P hat, so that's 1 minus x. So I'm going to have this function here that's going to multiply P and Q, right? I want to multiply P and Q, but remember P and Q are really what? If I say what's P hat times Q hat, I want that to be a maximum. That's really the same as saying let it be x times 1 minus x, right? So that's my function. And then from there, I'd end up having, well, x times 1, which is just x, minus x squared is equal to f of x. Now, this is actually a parabola. If I put it in more of a classic positioning, right? If I just move this over here and put this one first, you know, then we have this set up. And this would be what? This first term would be my a term, then my b term, then my c term. Now, if that's the case, we know that the vertex of a parabola is found by, at least the x part of the vertex of the parabola, is found by negative b over 2a. This is the formula, right? So what's the negative b term? Well, it'd be negative 1. And 2 times a is 2 times negative 1, so 2 times negative 1. If you work that out, that's going to give you 1 half, right? So what this x is representing, this is the x coordinate of the vertex. And what do I mean by vertex? Well, this is a parabola, right? So it opens, in this case, down. The parabola looks like that. And it opens down because it's negative here. So we want to know where is this location because this is what? This is the maximum of the vertex, right? And that will be, in other words, the place where we get the maximum product between P and Q. If we multiply P and Q, it will give us the maximum product there, right? Because every other combination is something lower than that. So the maximum is occurring, it says, when X is 1 half. But remember, X being 1 half is the same as saying, what? P hat is 1 half, or 0.5 as a decimal. So that would mean Q hat, 1 minus this, 1 minus a half, of course, is also a half. So we'd end up having the idea that p hat and q hat are a half. So we could then change this formula a little bit. We'd say that this is the same as saying 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 z squared alpha divided by 2 over e squared. And 0 0.5 times 0 0.5, of course, you can multiply or you can write 0 0.5 squared. So either way, this is the formula then where we assume that p hat and q hat are 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And we use that as a basis to estimate the n required to get the desired confidence level and desired margin of error. So this last part of the problem is a little complicated. And I don't think many professors would ask you to do that on a test. But the general idea is just to know this formula, essentially, and know that when you don't know p hat and q hat, you assume they're each 50%. And that will give you the proper expression to estimate n when dealing with a proportion.